Hi and hello everyone. What we have seen in the previous lecture is uh, a series network or a tandem network wherein our quantity of interest which is basically the number in the system at each node was the joint distribution of this was given by the product of their marginal distributions right. So, that is what we have seen say for example, we had uh, this kind of network is what we had it in mind for which uh, it was happening that the joint distribution is given in terms of the marginal distribution. So, it is really a truly product form solution in, even in any sense that you look at it. Okay. So, this a similar thing is possible like you know we could understand that how this is uh, resulting in the analysis is from the knowledge of Burke's theorem and it is possible right that you know similar kind of analysis can be you know taken forward to feed forward network like where also similar things can easily be followed without much difficulty is what okay. That is what we have seen. Now, in this situation we have assumed that all the nodes have infinite capacity meaning that there is ample space for queuing in front of every node. So, you know whenever it is passing one node, if it wants to go to the another node, in the destination node there is it can queue if it is not getting the service immediately. So, there is always uh, the, the uh, ample capacity to hold any number of customers in waiting in any particular node that is what we have assumed and that is what we are going to assume later on also. But if it is not the case right in reality nothing is infinite right it is always the case that uh, there is a finite amount of space only is available between the nodes. So, if that happens and that is what is called as blocking effect right. So, we have seen in single queue also like it could be blocking effect which means that if the capacity limitation is there with respect to nodes then blocking occurs. Of course, there are a general notion of blocking but even otherwise also blocking can occur but you know for us blocking means that a customer after having completed the service at say node i he wants to go to node j but node j has only a finite capacity meaning that it can only a finite amount of customers can queue in front of it to get the service and that limit is reached which means that capacity is full. So, from this after service completion now he cannot move to the destination node immediately. So, such an effect is what is called blocking in a single queue right what we have done is that you know we have assumed that you know the customers who are coming when the system is full are last to the system right. Then we looked at uh, the parameters of that like what would be the probability of that and how to minimize or how to create capacity in such a way that you want to be connected. So, you want to study all those things right. But in a network scenario such a loss in between right if it is happening at the arrival point it is a different matter like one can treat it as if it is a single queue. But if it happens when starting from one node to the other node if it, if it has to happen that may not be a realistic situation it can happen it is not that it cannot happen. But then it, it is not a realistic situation in many different situations right. So, it is not a practical option you know you keep only that as one of the uh, as a only option is not practical for networks of queues. So, but then then how you will treat that particular scenario, how you will uh, you know make the system to react to how the system will react to such a scenario depends on what kind of policy that you are going to adapt when blocking happens. Okay. So, this blocking characteristics could be of different types we are seeing you know few of them like for example, rejection blocking but this is basically what we could we are seeing it in single queue which is basically once the customer is blocked he is forced to leave the system right 
and this forced to leave thing can happen only in open networks obviously in, in closed network since no customer can leave or no customer can enter that will not happen so this kind of blocking if that is the policy then this is similar to what you are observing in case of single queue this is called rejection blocking means you reject when the customer is blocked the other is transfer blocking this is what typically normally one assumes. So, the blocked units wait at the current queue after having completed its service. Now, it cannot you know release the server. Okay. Server is also like cannot go to the other customer server because the current customer has not yet left the system. And this current customer who has already completed the service cannot move to the next node because there is a blocking there. So, this is what is called as transfer blocking. So, he will wait in with the current server network as long as he is able to move to the destination node. So, that is this is called transfer blocking and then repetitive service blocking. The blocked job goes to another service at the current node once he is not able to move to the destination node and this cycle can repeat also if necessary. Right. This is there are even other different policies like how one can do. Okay. So, rejection blocking, transfer blocking, repetitive service blocking is some of the common types that one occur depending upon the scenario. But the analysis of such queuing networks where blocking occurs is much more complex and it may not have the product form solution recall in a series network what we have done though the network is in series the join probability of number in the node 1 number in node 2 number in node 3 and so on number in node k is given by the product of the individual distribution which means that what you can treat particular node in isolation you analyze it you get the quantity then you can get the quantity for the whole network that was the scenario that is what the advantage of product form solution, but uh, you know here like it may not have product form solution as you know you would see now with a simple example say how things gets complex is just want to highlight we are not going to go very much in detail for which we consider a two node series queue, but with blocking again in a very simple situation that a very simple two station in each station there is a single server but no queue is allowed to form at any of the station. Okay. Arrivals follow a Poisson process with rate lambda. Service times at the two stations at the two nodes are exponential mu 1 and exponential mu 2. The blocking policy is transfer blocking which means the customer will wait with the current node until he can move to the next node. Okay. That is what is the scenario. So, the system in our like in our earlier model this could be represented as mm11 and the output goes to the next node where dot m11 is what the scenario there okay so this is what we have now you see here the possible system states are 0 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 which is much like the normal series queue thing that you can think and also B1 where this number 0010011 represents the number in each of these nodes. For example, 11 one means one customer in node 1, one customer in node 2. Since it is MM11, there cannot be more than one. So, we have to here. This node B1 is describes a situation where a customer is finished service at node 1, but is waiting for the server at node 2 to become free, is what this. Be. So, you have really now five system states and if p n 1 n 2 is the steady state probability of the system then they satisfy a set of equations here which is you know one each for each of these states is what then you can you can easily understand that from 0 0 it can go out only if there is an arrival in this case it will move to p 1 0 right so it comes here and from 0 1 with the service completion at node 2 it can come to 0 0 2. So, you can write down this in the usual manner right for similarly for 1 0 it can go out of this right if there is a service completion right then it will move to the node 2.
2 right and from 1 1 with the service completion at second node it can come to you know 1 0 or 0 0 with an arrival it can come to 1 0. Similarly, for 0 1 it can come right from 1 0 after a service completion right it can come to 0 1 or with block 1 right with mu 2 if the customer in node 2 is released then from block 1 it will move to 0 1 and from 0 1 either an arrival can happen to make it to P 1 1 or a service completion would make it to this case right at, at mu 2 will bring down to 0 0 right similarly 1 1 and B 1 also you can write. So, this is set of equations. Now, what one can do in principle as usual now all other probabilities can be expressed in terms of P 0 0 and you can use the normalization condition uh, to determine what is P 0 0 right. But the complex and then you can obtain the performance measure. So, given now for example, even in this particular case given certain parameter values I will get a you know set of equations which you can easily solve to get the quantities no issue right. But the complexity is it is very easy to see from this set of equation itself like if you start allowing suppose instead of 1 there are 2 customers here then one more state will come right like this it will expand right. But the point here is that if you allow positive but finite q capacity in front of each node this will expand the prop, but the complexity is that you have to write the balance equation for each possible state conceptually it is fine right you can write down whether it is even 1 million you can think that conceptually you can write down but practically that is not a feasible option right. Compare this with respect to the non-blocking network that we have considered earlier series network in this case you just have to treat a node in isolation but here you have to keep it together only and if the nodes are large and if the capacities are large enough right then you can see the imagination that you have to handle the whole thing together because it may not have product from solution right. So, but for large but finite set you know one can still use numerical but uh, otherwise you know it very difficult to analyze such a that is why we say that this is much more complex but blocking is relevant and with blocking effect has to be analyzed. So, one has to handle it at some level but things are complex which is in, in our normal scenario like we would not like to venture into at this point of time right. No, if uh, those who are interested can look into that of course, there are there are books on networks with blocking itself because of its relevance ok. So, that is one one can look into that ok. This is about blocking now we will not come back to this blocking aspects later on, but uh, we will be considering much simpler ones ok. Now, we generalize now blocking we have stopped uh, we have series we have done now in the series context itself we have now given the idea of the effect of blocking in a, in a queuing network what it can have. Now, it will consider truly a full general open Jackson network right. So, what is that? So, recall as described earlier an open Jackson network means this is a network of say k service nodes arrivals at node i is according to Poisson process with rate gamma i service rate which is exponential at node i is mu i and c i servers at node i routing probabilities r i j which is independent of the system state and r i 0 denoting the probability of exiting the network from node i and no limit on capacity at any node which means no blocking ok. This is what we have. So, we have a Markovian system here and the state of the system can be described via the number in the system in equilibrium because you are looking at in equilibrium uh, the number in the system in each of these nodes which we call it as n i which is basically number in the node means in queue and in service at node i in steady state. As usual what like in a series case what we want we want the joint distribution of this which is what is given by this the probability of n 1 equal to n 1, n 2 equal to n 2 and so on, n k equal to n k which is we denote it by 
P the subscript n1 comma n2 comma n2 and so on n k. Okay. Now once we have this, we know once we have the joint distribution. Now suppose if I want the marginal distribution of n1 alone, then I can you know sum over the remaining indices to get uh, this marginal distribution and I can obtain. So, any number of joint marginals anything I can obtain it once I have this full joint distribution that is what our objective is to see like in series case. In series case we saw that this breaks into product of the marginals. So, in a much more open general Jackson network again we were interested to see how this can be obtained. Okay. Recall in the previous class like we have in the previous lecture like we have drawn this to just to depict one typical uh, open Jackson network where there are k nodes in each node there are c i number of servers with the rate mu i capacity is infinite under each node. This red color arrows depict the arrivals from outside and this purple color arrows uh, depict the departures from any particular node to outside world and this green arrows uh, depict the you know movement or routing of customers from one node to the other according to certain probabilities that is what you know we have depicted here. For example, from here either it can go out or it can go to node 2, node 3 and node k possibly right. There could be n number of nodes in between does not matter. So, this is a typical example uh, that we have depicted. So, just recall this is what is the much general open Jackson network open because there is at least one node in which customers can come in and at least one node in which customer can go out apart from movements between the nodes right which is given by this routing probabilities from each node right. This is what you know you keep this in mind now like whatever we are going to analyze this particular network is what in this generality right. Now suppose this has feedbacks now if you want feed forward network only then we have to eliminate the feedbacks from here then you will get the feedback feed forward network it can still be in the open Jackson framework but without feedbacks. But this is much more general is what then we have it in mind. Okay. Now for ease of uh, you know writing down like the vector n1, n2 up to nk we denote it by n bar as the sim notation and in this n bar if the ith element is 1 plus than this n i then this is n bar i plus to denote that uh, it is basically the, in the ith element it is n i plus 1 and similarly n bar i minus mean in the ith element it is n i minus 1 and n bar i plus j minus means in the ith element it is plus 1 and in jth element it is minus 1 right that is what uh, we could see and for now right we are assuming single server system for now we will generalize this to later c server just for understanding but otherwise things will become a little complex so we will assume that there is a single server in each node though this generality is c servers we will come back to the c servers in for now we will assume that this is a single server uh, at each node it is what is the scenario that we are assuming okay now if that is the case then the global balance equation can be written down for the state n bar with this condition that each of these ni's are at least one so none of these ni's are going to be zero in this equation right that is what is the general equation that that is what general uh, set of equation that one would have and this is what it is right. So, you can easily understand the flow in and flow out right say for example what is the first term tells right the system what was in n bar i minus remember n bar i minus is that the ith element is one less okay ith element is one less and with the gamma i an arrival can happen to make this ith element to n bar. So, that is what will happen. So, this basically this with respect to n bar is we are writing it the left side is the flow into the state and this is flow out of the state the right hand side is okay. 
So, it was in state n bar i minus means ith element was 1 less and with an arrival external arrival it can come to n bar that is and this i could be anything between any node between 1 to k. So, this is what is with one arrival it can come to n bar arrival at any of these nodes. So, i is equal to 1 to k. Now, similarly here right. So, it was in n bar i plus j minus. So, what was that? In ith element it was plus 1 and the jth element it was minus 1 and service is completed at ith uh, node with rate mu i and from there it is going to make a movement from i to j right from i to j is what then can happen so that the total state now it will become n bar right. Now, this i and j could be anything except that it, they are not the same. So, that is what this quantity is ok. The third one would be it in the ith element there was plus 1 right plus 1 and a service completion happens and with probability r i 0 it exit the network right. So, that is what this term would be it could happen from any of this node. So, this is what is the flow into the state n bar. On the other hand right if it is in n bar, but it is service is completed right, but with probability 1 minus r i i it will be going out of uh, the state n bar ok. So, with r i i it will remain there, but with 1 minus r i it will move out of state n bar and hence you have this expression. And similarly here it was in n bar and any arrival would take this to out of the state n bar. So, this is what is the global balance equation. Now, if this is the same equation will also hold for the case of uh, n i equal to 0. If we set the terms with the negative subscript terms containing uh, what is negative subscripts and terms containing mu i when corresponding n i is 0 to 0 ok. If you set those terms to 0 then appropriately it can come right in all the terms you now if you just write it down and if you set that such terms equal to 0 that is basically the equations corresponding to the boundary states right. So, you will get for any 1 zeros, 2 zeros, 3 zeros out of this k number and are all zeros whatever is the case. So, if you get from this one can write down in effect the balance equation for the boundary states ok. So, this is a generic one that is what you will keep that in mind the generic one we are keeping it in mind ok. So, this is what is the global balance equations right. Now, we need to solve this to get p n bar ok. Jackson so, how do we do that is what is this significant and uh, very important work of Jackson? He showed that the solution to the balance equation is in a product form, but here the product form by that what we mean is basically we are assuming that if p n bar if it can be written in this form that some constant times rho 1 to the power n 1, rho 2 to the power n 2 and so on is a product right rho k to the power n k right or it is you know some constant times a product of some function of n i's some function of n i's is what then you could call it in this in general ok. So, this uh, definition of product form is less restrictive in the sense that we do not require in this form of definition that the C need not separate into an actual product right. But if it so happens that is still product like in a series network case it did happen that the C itself was you know uh, separated into product of the individual quantities. So, that was nice very nice. So, that is what is product product form. Some people call that as a product form, but this definition is less, less restrictive in the sense that C need not factor into products ok. So, what he showed is that the solution is in this form is what then he showed ok and he gave the that is what is. So, this we will give the solution that is this 
and then show that it satisfies the balance equation that we have just written down. Okay. And this is also called as Jackson's result or Jackson's theorem for open network. Many, many people would like to call this as simply as Jackson's theorem for open network. Mean that the solution to the joint distribution is what is given by this Jackson's theorem and that is what we are calling it as a solution. Now, to do that, what we have to have is that so, we need to find out this lambda i's, what are they? This is the total average flow in, uh, into state or node i. Okay. This could be external or this could be internal. Internal means it is coming from some other node, external means it is coming arrivals from outside. That is the reason like we usually call it from external arrivals lambda i, but here we did not call it lambda i gamma i because lambda i you know we want to call this as the lambda i that is the only reason. Otherwise, if you call that as lambda i this you have to call by something else for convenience anyway. Now, how do we get this lambda i? Remember we are given gamma i's and r i j's right. So, now if it has to satisfy the flow balance at each node, then we need to have this traffic equations, the flow balance equation or this is also called as flow balance equation at each node of other network in a way. That is what is called traffic equations because we want to compute this lambda i and that is why we are calling this way traffic equations. So, the traffic equations need to be satisfied. Now, what is this traffic equation? You, you understand the spirit, it is exactly same as what we have been doing. So, if I denote lambda i is the total rate of flow into node i, right, which means it is you know the combined flow of both external and internal arrivals, then lambda i would be gamma i, which is basically the component corresponding to the external arrivals gamma i plus then it, it has to come from the internal nodes, right. Now, for the jth node, it arrived at the rate lambda j and from out of this rate, right, r j i is the proportion of arrivals or customers that comes to node i, right. So, this, this can be j can be from any j, right. So, even from its the same i, i th node itself, right. So, this is what is the total of the internal flows into node i, this is the flow into node i external. So, this lambda i is equal to this, right. Now, if you write this in matrix vector form, it is basically lambda equal to gamma plus lambda times r and this r is what is called as routing matrix, which tells you like from where to where the, the, the flow will happen. For example, in this particular case like these entries, right r 1, r 1, 2, right, there is no feedback here. So, the self feedback is not there, but otherwise r 1, 1, r 1, 2, r 1, 3, r 1, 4, r 1, k, r 1, 0, all put together is what is probability 1, that is what you know you will have. So, this matrix is between these nodes, between the nodes of the thing is what is given by this routing matrix, right. So, this is the uh, routing matrix is R, when we say routing matrix, it is what is called, this is the, the it gives the, the probability of moving from one node to the other node at the end of service completion. So, the solution to this equation is given by simply lambda which is equal to gamma times I minus R, this identity matrix I minus R to the power minus 1 or inverse of I minus R. This inverse exists as long as there is at least one node which uh, for exit and no node is totally observing. So, as long as that is there, so this inverse would exist. So, meaning that this uh, under that condition, this system of equations becomes linearly independent and you can find a solution to this uh, system. So, that is what we will give you. Now, once I computed this lambda i, which is the you know, if I look at here, so I consider all these things together, I compute this, all these arrivals put together in a way I am computing the rate, right, for each node, 
for each node here. For each node here, what is the total rate of flow into state? That is what will lambda I will give you. Now, once I gave this, have this lambda I, then rho I I can define to be lambda I by mu I. And we know that the network will be at equilibrium if each of these nodes are at equilibrium, which can happen only if rho i less than 1. Then what the solution to that is that the steady state solution to the balance equation as given by Jackson is basically P n bar, which is P n 1 comma n 2 comma n k, which is equal to this quantity. Now, you can see here, right. So, this is as if you know it is like this right you are seeing it here right so which is a true product of the marginal distribution you know so the c times rho 1 to the power n 1 and so on is what we have written but that c actually factors into the product of 1 minus rho, rho i s and hence this is actually factors into this so which is also similar to what you had seen it in the case of a series network right so this is what is jackson's solution is jackson's theorem gives you the solution to this open jackson network as this in case of single server that's why we are getting we are we have taken single server just to you know take some simpler form of solutions like this to exhibit so that the balance equation is writing it easy and then this is also easy to see here okay now so what what are the implications of this result right so, once the traffic equations have been solved and you have obtained lambda i's, right, then you know this is as if you know, right, you can see that this is exactly p at n1, p at n2, and so on, p at nk. It is a product of the marginals, is what you are actually seeing it as if it is happening here, right. So, this is what we say as a true product of the marginal distribution. So, because of this one, it is not just the product form the way we defined, but because of the product form of the marginals in terms of marginals, what this implies is that the individual nodes may be considered in isolation just like we have did it in the series uh, tandem network case and hence and then putting together you can get the joint distribution. Right? It is a very uh, you know powerful result in the team because such a complex network you are seeing, but the analysis what ultimately you see is if the network satisfies this properties, then what you are seeing is that individually I can treat them as if it is a separate entity and then I can put together and do. It is a great thing to do. But here there are certain uh, points that you need to observe. The network acts as if each node could be as an independent mm one q even though that is really not the case. Whereas, in series network they are really independent, but here they can be viewed as an independent and the joint distribution can be written as a product of module distribution as it turns out here. The flow into each node behave as if it is, I mean it is Poisson, okay. even though they may not really be Poisson in nature especially this is especially the case when there is a feedback in the network. When there is a feedback in the network, it has been shown in the literature or it can be shown with a little bit of effort that uh, the actually the internally when the flow if you look at into the any particular node, they need not be Poisson. Okay. One can split that further go deeper into that, we are not going to do that. What, what is relevant here is in a series network, when we have only feed for R in general feed for network, they will be really independent. But whenever in an open Jackson network, when there is a there is a feedback feature is there, right? The internal flows are not really Poisson. Like this has been shown long back. It's a new feature that you are talking about here. But for us to understand that a bit difficult, but it's actually the case that. Uh, the internal flows is not really Poisson in general, okay. at least whenever there is a feedback. If there is no feedback, obviously they, they, it can be shown that they are truly Poisson, but otherwise it is not. But even then, the, the advantage at the plus point of this Jackson theory, even then this result holds, even if there is a feedback. That is what is the power or the 
significance of this particular result that you have. Okay. So, now let us quickly verify the solution. So, what we have here is that this is the form. So, we will first show that you know P n which is equal to this satisfies the balance equation and using the normalization condition that C turns out to be this. If you have shown this then we have shown that this is the solution to this balance equation. Right. Now, recall this balance equation here what we are going to do is we are going to you know plug in for this c times in this particular case for example, rho i to the power n i except that i th 1 alone will be n i minus 1 right that is what you know you will have. Similarly, here this is all c times rho i to the power n i the product of them except that the i th 1 will be n i plus 1 and the j th 1 will be n j minus 1 in the power right because of this particular form that we are picking it up. P n bar i plus means only the i th element it will be n i plus 1 j i n j minus means j th element will be n j minus. Once you plug it there right into that balance equation then for example, the this one will give me that 1 i plus was there right. So, that is what you know will turn out to be here and if I cancel it out this quantity right in both sides of the equation what we want to see that it will be whether this is equal. So, I am putting an, a, the question mark against this equality because we want to see whether these two are equal when you put the solution in both sides of the, uh, the flow balance equation. right? So, the first term here for example, p i p n bar i minus. So, the i th 1 will be 1 minus. So, you add you multiply and divide by i the i th quantity 1 rho i that is what will be this right gamma i times divided by rho i is what then you will get here. So, the next term, next term all terms are in the same fashion that you know you will do. So, after cancelling it out this is what you will end up with this. Okay. But now, the traffic equation is this what we have done is that the jth one we have written down explicitly separately. Okay. So, lambda j minus gamma j minus r j j lambda j would be equal to this quantity we want to write that. So, that is what is the case here. Now, what one can do here is that in this set you can substitute this expression here right r i j lambda i for i equal to 1 to k i naught equal to j is what then you can substitute here you will end up with j is equal to 1 then this mu i mu i will get cancelled and mu j by you know lambda j will be here uh, lambda i r i j is what this quantity for i this this whole quantity is what then would be equal to this as per this expression. Okay. Now, I can change this i because I want to combine this together this just indices alone from i j to i I can change and I can write this together in this form. right? first term as it is this to this term as it is this term is also here and this is here right now again you know you can see that this lambda i this lambda i right lambda i lambda i and this mu i is here summation mu i on the left side summation mu i is on the right side right so i can cancel it out right so this is mu i by lambda i uh, gamma i here right gamma i mu i by lambda i there is a plus this is minus this term also will go right r i i lambda i. So, there is one here mu i. So, lambda i lambda i will go this is mu i r i i minus. So, here also minus. So, this term also will get cancelled with this right. You will be left with only this term on the left hand side and you will have right side only at this term. That means, finally, we will get this as the expression. Now, if this is true that means, the solution satisfies the balance equation. Now, you see what is this means? This is the sum of right flow into the network from all nodes and this is the sum of flow out of the network from all nodes. right? So, from lambda i i at the node with probability r i 0 it goes out right. So, this is from the i th node it is the flow out sum of sum over all the nodes and this is sum over. And 
for an equilibrium to hold means that this must be equal right and hence this is true right so this is true and hence right the form here satisfies the balance equation now we have to show c is equal to really this which is nothing but the normalization condition you know you pick normalization condition once you, once you pick and then you obtain c is equal to this quantity as its uh, the what we call the quantity c is given in terms of now if you plug this into this with c here oh sorry here there is a, you know on typo here just have to be 1 2 and this must be k fine so that is what you know you need to understand right so this is what you get here and finally you will arrive at this as the solution so we have verified now the solution uh, to this are the we have in fact seen uh, the jackson theorem essentially for single server thing we will generalize this to the uh, next one now once we have this then again as usual the performance measures can be obtained in a routine way uh, for, a, for, for a single channel node open Jackson network in a, open Jackson network with single channel at each node then we can obtain Li the number in the system or each node and its waiting time in each node or the system time or sojourn time in each node is this here is really the sojourn time is what is the word used in this networks in a way for node y now this is because the product form of the joint distribution remember but that does not imply that the nodes are truly mm1 it is not because of that it is coming it is because of the joint distribution factors into the product of certain marginal distribution and from there we are getting this that is how you know you are obtaining this quantity okay. so the expected number of total customers in the network is uh, summation of this really because you have to add in uh, in each node whatever number of customers you simply add you will get this so the expected total weight in the system which is basically the sojourn time in the system for any customer before its final departure is basically w which is summation li by summation gamma I. this is the total arrival rate into the network and this is the total number of customers in the network so this is the total weight or the to sojourn time mean sojourn time in the network for all the customers which is basically the Littles formula for the entire network that you have here. So like these are straight away the performance measures that you can obtain it for ith node and from there then you can write for give for the entire network ok. So we will stop here and then more we will see in the next lecture. Thank you. Bye.